The stock market and engineering, two things I'm very passionate about. And in today's video, you're gonna learn about Project Slade, my stock assistant lamp. Did you click on this video so you could see my stock robot? This one right here, that changes color according to the stock market's performance. Well, if you did, this video is for you. The entire build process has been divided into three different sections. So in section number one, I'll be explaining my light detection system, the logic behind it, and how I was able to detect light with a photoresistor, which enabled me to make my device turn on and off automatically according to the lighting in the room. And there we go. Then in section two, I'll be talking about how I used a Brazilian stock API to collect real-time data on the Brazilian stock market, which then allowed to lead into section three, which is how I coded the LEDs according to the change of the stock market and also my 3D print and assembling everything together. So here's a quick explanation of how my lighting system works and the logic behind it. Now this is what the actual light detection circuit looks like hooked up to a breadboard. As you can see, the orange wire is hooked up to the analog to digital converter pin of the Raspberry Pico Pi. Then we also have the 3.3 volt high connected to the white wire. And then the ground is connected to the green wire. And this is what the light detection circuit looked like. As for how the lighting system works, I'm gonna be honest. Most of us probably don't even care. And with TikTok nowadays, don't even have a long enough attention span to watch through an entire video. But just in case you do, you can click up here and get a full thorough explanation of how my lighting circuit works. But here's a summary. The photoresistor has an analog change in resistance according to the lighting in the room. With the circuit I build and utilizing the analog to digital converter pin of the Raspberry Pico Pi, I can then convert those analog values into digital values. Then with digital values I can work with, I can calibrate my device and make it turn on and off according to the change in the lighting of the room. Here's what the code output looks like running with my lighting circuit. Notice that with the light on, the code outputs values of about 24 to 25,000. Then, when I turn off the lights, the values drop to about two to 3,000. And once again, when I turn the lights back on, it'll jump up to 24,000 to 25,000. That's exactly how my code works to measure and quantify the lighting in my room. Now I can take that value and I can calibrate it so that when I turn off the lights in my room, everything will go off. Now, on to section two. An API is an application programming interface, which is what allows Slade to communicate with the outside web and receive information. So the Raspberry Pi inside Slade, which acts as the brain of the computer, sends out a request to an API, which then in turn receives the request and returns the information to Slade, allowing my lamp to update and change its color according to the performance of the stock market. The API I chose for this project was managed by a Brazilian company called Brapi. And as you can see on their website, they have displayed some of the API documentation and things you need to consider when sending them a request from your device. I decided to display an index fund called Bova Onzi on Slade, which basically encompasses all major 100 companies in Brazil. And finally on screen we can see what an example request looks like to this API written in Python which was the chosen language for this project. Now, it's important to remember that Slade sends out a request to the API every five minutes which allows it to update its information and update its color. On to section three, where we're gonna look at the building and assembly process of our project, and we're gonna see how the LEDs were coded and how everything came together to build Project Slade. The first step in the assembly line of this project was syncing the light detection circuit with the LED lights. So as you can see there, I was switching the lights on and off and ensuring that the LEDs would also switch on and off in order to then move on to the next component of the project, which was coding the LEDs to change color according to the information returned by the API. Here's a sample of the code I wrote for Project Slade and how I joined the separate modules to form one in my main code. And on screen is my main file, which runs automatically every time I plug the Raspberry Pi into the wall. Then I joined the main file modules, which was my API request module. Then I joined the LED code and ensured that was working so I could make the LEDs turn any color I wanted. I also incorporated the Wi-Fi to ensure it had a secure Wi-Fi connection. And finally, I made sure the light detection circuit was working and all separate modules were working together and performing the role they should without raising any major errors. When it came to the 3D print, I made sure to keep my design fairly simple and cylindrical 
Also, I ensured that it could be easily assembled and taken apart throughout the assembly process. Once my 3D print was finalized, I made my way over to the electrical makerspace where I found a solderable breadboard. I made sure to solder some headers onto the breadboard and not the Pico directly onto it. I also wanted to solder everything onto a single breadboard because A, it was smaller and also I wanted to improve my soldering skills just as an overall technique and for any project I might take on in the future, as I do plan to be taking on many more projects. And there in the middle cylinder is where I inserted my Pico and the breadboard, which is why I wanted to make sure everything was very compact. And on that note, we were reaching the final stages of the project, which is why I began assembling all the end components. And I also began troubleshooting the code for any final errors, which was one major problem that I did have, as the Pico would not run continuously for more than about 24 hours before raising a major error. Once I ran into that issue, I set up a system called Watchdog System, which basically reboots the code every time it becomes unresponsive, and that's how I overcame that error and reached the final product, which is what I have now. Project Slade. My working stock lamp assistant. Congratulations, you've made it this far, and that was the entire process of how I built Slade. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to follow as I'll be having more videos and projects coming out soon. And as always guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.